If you're joining us now, the House has officially passed one of the biggest changes to the tax code rewritten in three decades. They got their win. They are now it's passed through the House. It's going to head and make its way to the Senate. It'll be up for a few hours of debate and then the Senate is expected to vote on final passage. Our understanding, we believe they'll have those votes from the Republicans straight down party lines. Uh, and the image you're seeing on the right hand of your screen is a White House press briefing. We are expecting White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders to come out. They, as I mentioned, delayed the briefing to make sure they had the votes as expected in the House. And uh, uh, Vice, uh, Vice President Pence is also on Capitol Hill. And tell me a little bit more. You were talking earlier about what he'll be doing in his role as the votes come down in the Senate. Well, he's here primarily for lunch. He is, remember, officially the president of the Senate. He oversees the body uh, during votes and whatnot, and, and he has been coming up here pretty regularly to meet with Republican senators. To and talk I apologize. About, I'm going to have to cut uh, you off. We're going to head to the White House for the briefing there with Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Step closer to the president making good on his promise to deliver tax cuts for Christmas. We are looking forward to the Senate vote later this evening, and the president will be monitoring these developments throughout the day. As December winds down, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to look back at what has been, by any measure, a historic year. Nearly 1.7 million new jobs have been created, and the unemployment rate has fallen to 4.1 percent, the lowest rate in 17 years. The stock market reached a record high more than 60 times and closed above 24,000 for the first time in history. We've rolled back 22 regulations for every one new regulation, saving taxpayers over $8 billion and liberating America's economy from the grip of bloated government. We've withdrawn from or began renegotiating the trade deals that once threatened to destroy American industry and shipped our jobs around the world. We finally set up our nation on a path to not only energy independence, but energy dominance. We approved the Keystone XL and Dakota Access pipelines, directed the EPA to end the job-killing war on coal, and upon the tax bill's passage, we'll have opened up ANWR to responsible energy exploration. The President has protected America's communities. We've seen the lowest level of illegal border crossings on record. We ended the Obama administration's dangerous catch-and-release policies, restoring law and order both on the border and in the interior. And we've designed and built eight wall prototypes for the border wall. We've taken unprecedented steps to tackle America's opioids epidemic by directing the declaration of a nationwide public health emergency. And we've promoted peace through strength. Under the president's leadership, ISIS has lost nearly all of its territory and its most important strongholds in Iraq and Syria. We've restored old alliances, forged new ones, begun rebuilding our military, and made it clear to the world that there is no greater ally, no more fearsome adversary than the United States of America. We've reshaped the American judiciary for generations. Justice Gorsuch was confirmed to the Supreme Court, and 22 judges have been confirmed, including a record-setting 12 circuit judges. We protected life by reinstating and expanding the Mexico City policy that protects $9 billion in U.S. taxpayer dollars from being used to fund abortion. And this evening, hopefully upon passage of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the President will have delivered the most significant tax cut in the history of the nation and repealed the Obamacare individual mandate. The President has delivered on promise after promise, issue after issue, time after time, and we're just getting started. As some of you may have seen yesterday, Disney World debuted its animatronic President Trump for its famed Hall of Presidents. In the President's remarks for the exhibit, which he recorded here at the White House earlier this year, he said, from the beginning, America has been a nation defined by its people. It's why our founders began our great Constitution with three very simple words, we the people. In the coming days, political analysts will write and the talking heads will discuss what this year means, what it means for the President, what it means for the Republican and Democrat parties, and for the never-ending political theater in Washington, D.C. But I would encourage everyone to take a step outside of the Beltway bubble and consider what this year means for the American people. To the forgotten men and women around our country, you are forgotten no more. This president is with you 100%, and as this year has already proven, he will never let you down. 
And with that, I will take your questions. John. Uh, two questions on tax reform, both of them quick, if I could. Uh, first of all, what's the schedule for signing? I understand this may not happen until after the Christmas break. Look, we're still working on the details of the signing, but first we want to make sure it gets passed. That's what we're focused on right now, is helping make sure we see this through to the finish in the Senate, and then we'll announce plans on what a, a signing would look like and where it would take place following that. Se second question, the carried interest provision. This is something that, this is a loophole that President Trump <coughs> promised again and again and again to close. The carried interest loophole is still there in this bill. Why did the president not insist on getting rid of that? Look, the president was focused uh, and he laid out what his four biggest principles were that he wanted to make sure were part of any piece of legislation. We feel that the piece of legislation where it is now certainly answered and addressed that. That has been our focus all along uh, and what we've continued to talk about consistently here and every time we've talked about taxes. Hey, so, yeah. The president has said that this tax bill is going to cost him a fortune. It's actually not the case. How does he figure this is going to cost him a lot of money? Look, we expect um, that it likely will, certainly on the personal side, uh, could cost the president a lot of money. Again, the president's focus hasn't necessarily been uh, at all on himself, but it's been on those four principles that we laid out. Number one, and priority number one, being that it helps the American middle class. We know that this bill does that, and that's one of the biggest reasons that the president has supported it, been engaged, and will um, look forward to signing it hopefully in the coming days. So he's the benefit from pass through deductions, top rate tax reduction, the state tax exemption is doubled. He's going to make money on that. Uh, look, again, um, this is a tax plan that we hope benefits all Americans, primarily, and priority number one is middle class Americans. That has been this administration's focus. We feel like that is certainly addressed uh, and been prioritized in this legislation, and we're going to be very excited to sign it, hopefully, in the coming days. Matthew? Thanks, Sarah. Early reports are indicating that that fatal Amtrak derailment out in Washington, uh, similar to the 2015 derailment in Philadelphia, could have been prevented by positive train control, uh, which Congress back in 08 mandated was supposed to be on all lines by 2015. That's been pushed back, and it's only on a quarter of passenger lines right now. Is this White House considering any steps to speed up the implementation of positive train control uh, to stop these kinds of accidents? Right now, we're continuing to review and investigate exactly what took place uh, yesterday. And once we have a more uh, detailed determination on that, we can take steps to prevent things like this from happening in the future. John? Thanks a lot, Sarah. You ticked off a number of accomplishments that you see the president uh, has made in this first year in office. Why are his approval ratings mired in the mid to upper 30s despite those accomplishments? Uh, I think oftentimes because uh, while the president and this administration has been very focused on how we can better help the American people, I think oftentimes uh, the media is focused on other things, certainly not talking about the growing economy, certainly not talking about the uh, crushing of ISIS, not talking about the creation of jobs. If you look at the amount of time that is spent on negative coverage of this president, 90 percent of the coverage is negative about this president when, as you just said, I listed off a number of things that have been pretty historic in nature in this first year. And if people were focused a lot more on those things in the media, I think that his numbers would be a lot higher. We anticipate that they're going to go up as more and more of these things continue to happen, and particularly as more and more people start to feel the impact of the booming economy, the tax cuts that will take place later tonight and go into effect in the first part of February. I think those are all things that are going to help boom our numbers. And, and separately, Sarah, just uh, if I may, Matthew Peterson, since we last met, uh, withdrew his judicial nomination. There's been a viral video of his inability to answer some basic legal questions when he went up before his confirmation hearing. How did he sort of slip through the cracks? Why was he nominated? And are you doubling up your effort here at the White House uh, over at DOJ to make sure that your judicial nominees can answer those basic questions when they go up to the confirmation hearing? Look, the president's uh, judicial selection process has led to a historic pace of confirmations, including 12 circuit uh, court justices and a Supreme Court justice. Every administration has individuals that don't go all the way through the process. We've had 60 nominees and only three that haven't gone through this process. That individual has withdrawn, and we're going to make sure that we fill that spot with a really strong and good qualified candidate. Dave? 
Thanks. Where was the president watching when the House voted, and did you see his reaction? What did he do? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'll have to circle back with you on that. I was uh, getting ready to come out. I was watching to make sure I didn't make you guys wait too much longer. One thing on nominations. Can you explain, now that we're near the end of the year, why the president has submitted far fewer names to the Senate for nomination than his predecessors at this point in this term? Look, we've been focused on filling positions uh, as quickly as possible, but at the same time, um, the president has said before he doesn't think that every single position in the government needs to be filled. He's going to cut back on some of those positions. We've been focused on some of the top priority places, and we're going to continue filling out individuals. But we've also seen a massive slowdown and obstruction by the Democrats. Hopefully, they'll continue to push our people through, particularly uh, in individuals that were held up, whether it's um, in the judiciary or something that falls under the national defense profile. Blake. Thank you. Um, let me ask you a couple questions, pick up where John Roberts left off. He asked you about the carried interest loophole. You said uh, essentially that it fell within the president's four main principles that he laid out. How is keeping the carried interest loophole, or at least a portion of it? We're going to continue to monitor the White House press briefing, but on your right, I want to take you to GOP leaders who are talking right now about the passing the tax reform bill through the House. We could leapfrog back into the lead pack is the best place on the planet for the next new job and that next new business. Today, we achieved those goals. And as we go forward, I want American taxpayers to think of three dates and keep them in mind. New Year's Day, America will have a new tax code for a new era of American prosperity. In February, on February 1st, look at your paychecks, because you'll see the tax relief we delivered today. And on April 15th, you will, for the last time, file your taxes under this horrible, terrible tax code that we're putting behind us for the American people. Together we did this without the leadership of our House, especially our Speaker Paul Ryan, but of the work that's been done by the American people through their representatives, we're delivering a new tax code. I want to thank Chairman Brady for the work that he has done bringing this conference together, going through the conference report with the Senate, and having this bill pass the floor today. It will move over to the Senate, and it will pass today and become law. So for every American that had fought for a pay raise, for every parent, for everyone who ever dreamed of opening a small business or being an entrepreneur, I want you to know we heard you. We heard you loud and clear. That's what this bill is about. It's about the American comeback the opportunity to let you keep more of what you earn, to make America competitive around the world, and to make sure small businesses have an ability to compete. It's going to be the lowest rate they've seen in 40 years. The family's going to double their standard deduction. But come February, check your check, because you will get a raise in your payroll of what you're going to see based upon what happened today. This is an historic day. Uh, if you're somebody who's been working really hard and you just want to keep more of your hard-earned money, this is an historic day for you. If you're an American like those of us here that are tired of seeing jobs shipped overseas because America had the highest corporate tax rate in the industrialized world and we couldn't compete anymore, this is an historic day for you to finally be able to see those jobs come back to America. If you're somebody who's been sitting on the sidelines after eight years of sluggish growth in an economy that was growing at less than 2%, and so you just gave up looking for work. This is an historic day for you because now you finally have that shot at the American dream again because we're building a tax code that works for families and that creates jobs, makes America competitive again, and allows hardworking families to put more money back in their pockets. There was a lot of hard work that went into this. Uh, Chairman Brady, Speaker Ryan, the Ways and Means Committee and all the conferees who worked tirelessly for months. And our attitude from the beginning was failure is not an option because the American people have been waiting too long for this relief. But look, the last time something this historic happened was in 1986. And when Ronald Reagan was signing that bill into law, he talked about how hard the journey was, but how he never gave up. And back then the headline read that this was a day that many thought was not possible but ultimately became inev inevitable. Well, today, the impossible became the inevitable again. 
Well, it's a, it's a hopeful day. It's a brighter day for all Americans and their families. And as you think about the impact of this package on everyday Americans, it's, it's so clear. Whether you're moms or dads or students or seniors or small business owners, everyone is going to have an opportunity for a better life. And that's why we are so excited today to see the, the tax cuts and jobs bill pass the House with such a big vote. So as we move forward, we're going to continue to celebrate what this bill has to offer. You think about bringing down tax rates for all Americans. You think about those that have an idea to start a business, grow a business, create jobs. This is the beginning of a, a new bright future for them. And that's why we stand here so excited about what it means for people, for everyday Americans, hardworking men and women that have been doing all the right things, feel like they're falling behind, they have a brighter future. I want to start off by thanking the American people, our constituents, for sending us here to do this work for them. This is one of the most important pieces of legislation that Congress has passed in decades to help the American worker, to help grow the American economy. This is profound change, and this is change that is going to put our country on the right path. For all those millions of men and women in America who are living paycheck to paycheck, who are struggling to get ahead, help is on the way. For all those businesses that are tied with one hand behind their back in this global economy, having a hard time com compete, help is on the way. I want to thank Chairman Kevin Brady. I want to thank all the men and women who made this possible. This has been a long work in progress. And what this achievement marks is a promise that this majority made that is a promise this majority is keeping. We said in 2016 that it would take real tax reform for families and businesses to get the American economy growing, and we were serious. And the American people placed their trust in us to do this work for them, and today we're making good on that promise. We're fulfilling that promise. And this promise being kept today is one of the most important things we could do to get the U.S. economy growing faster, to help people get bigger paychecks, to have a fairer tax system, and to simplify the system so people can have more peace of mind. So Kevin said it the right way. On January 1, Americans are going to wake up with a new tax code. In February, they're going to see withholdings go down so they see bigger paychecks. And April 15th will be the last day they have to comply with the old bad system. This is a good day for America. This is a good day for workers. This is a great day for growth. And we're very excited about this moment. Thank you. Question. Mr. Um, so you have said that uh, you've spoken often about the tax cuts that families will see in the first few years of the plan. What can you say about the tax cuts that individuals will see in the end of the next decade? Because the JCT analysis showed that sure. some so lower class our, We have every intent of making those permanent because of the Senate rules. You know why that that sunset is there. So it is obviously our intent, like times past, to make all those permanent. So the Casey. impact will actually be bigger. Casey. Mr. Speaker, uh, Congress doesn't have the greatest track record of planning to do something later and then following through. How can you guarantee Americans that they're still going to see the benefits of this tax cut? Look at what we've done right now. We were planning on doing this tax reform bill all year long last year. We worked on it all year. We ran out in 2016. We spent 2017 working on this legislation, and here it is. We're getting it done. This was a promise made. This is a promise kept. Last question. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, does the lack of Democratic support mean that this tax overhaul is vulnerable the same way that the Affordable Care Act was vulnerable and ultimately changed, going to be changed today? I think, by the, I think the comparison is a non sequitur because the Affordable Care Act proved to be extremely unpopular. The Affordable Care Act proved to reduce health care choices, to raise premiums, to make health care unaffordable. This is going to do the opposite. This is going to grow the economy. It's going to increase paychecks. It's going to increase take-home pay. And that, I believe, is going to be very popular. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Republicans on the Hill. Uh Speaking out after their big win there, 227 to 203 was the final vote in the House for the tax bill. 